When it comes to China's space exploration, what comes to mind? The China Space Station, Chinese Taikonauts, launch vehicles, or spacecrafts? These are pretty cool, but I'm sure you want to know more, like the recent lunar mission that brought back the lunar samples from the far side of the moon for the first time ever in human history. In 2024, one lunar mission captivated the world. China launched its Chang'e 6 mission, the first in the world to bring back lunar samples from the moon's hidden face, the far side. Within the Chang'e 6 lunar samples, we discovered a small amount of material that recorded the formation time of the moon's largest basin. We found that it formed 4.25 billion years ago, and this is our most important discovery. This is the first direct result of any sample that has been collected from the South Pole Aitken Basin area. It's a very significant age that has been derived from Chang'e 6 samples. Humanity has sent more than 140 missions to the moon, but only 11 of them have collected samples. Remarkably, 10 of those missions explored only the near side. China's Chang'e 6 mission broke new ground. So, Professor Mahash, what do you think of China's two sample return missions? Chang'e 5 and Chang'e 6 are the only two most recent sample return missions that in my lifetime. <laughs> so, so therefore, it has been super exciting. But in addition to that, I mean, the discoveries that have come about from these two missions are just, you know, amazing. It brought a lot of people together. I mean, he joined hands with Chinese scientists to research China's Chang'e 5 samples, revealing something startling, a dry lunar mantle reservoir for young mare basalts. But behind these groundbreaking discoveries lies a more compelling story. China's lunar exploration program has gone from newcomer to pioneer in just 20 years. The country has successfully executed all the missions. But the legacy of these missions isn't just in rocks. The country has also explored a broader landscape of international cooperation. Four nations hitched a ride on Chang'e 6, with payloads from the European Space Agency, France, Italy, and Pakistan. These international instruments have unlocked unprecedented research opportunities on the moon. I have been actually working and thinking about this project more than a, a decade ago. Actually, there was a gap of almost 20 years, 15 to 20 years, where there was almost no mission to the solar system. And so I'm very excited that this, um, this project that was just in my mind finally becomes a reality. Such cooperation is expected to deepen with future missions the focus will be on the lunar south pole, where an even bigger blueprint has been set, the International Lunar Research Station. And in this sector, China is pushing the international cooperation. One example is the one between China and Pakistan. Twenty twenty four marks a historic milestone for Pakistan's space ambitions. As China's Chang'e 6 space probe soared towards the moon, aboard it was Pakistan's first ever lunar CubeSat satellite, a symbol of a deepening partnership between China and Pakistan in space exploration. For Pakistan, this tiny satellite represents giant strides. With its successful entry into lunar orbit, Pakistan has joined an elite group of nations venturing into deep space. But how did collaboration with China make it possible? The SPACO is having an overarching agreement with the China National Space Administration covering the different aspects of the space industry, uh, the satellite development, uh, the launch programs, and also the International uh, Lunar Research Station cooperation as well. Between 2019 and 2024, China and Pakistan have signed 12 cooperation agreements. The CubeSat project is just one of many joint ventures strengthening Pakistan's space program. In a groundbreaking move for Pakistan's space ambitions, China is set to train Pakistani astronauts and take them on upcoming space missions. This collaboration marks a historic first for Pakistan, paving the way for its entry into human space flight. With China's expertise in state-of-the-art space programs, Pakistani astronauts will receive advanced training 
preparing them for future missions beyond Earth's atmosphere. Human space flight is, 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 is one of the bigger milestones for any nation. Uh, and this is the first time that uh, Pakistani astronauts will go to uh, space. They will go to the Chinese uh, space station and uh, everyone is very excited about it. But uh, before doing that, uh, there will be a selection process. Then based on uh, the opportunity uh, there, uh, then uh, those uh, astronauts were going to go in space and they were going to be doing the experiments. Beyond lunar missions, China-Pakistan space cooperation has already transformed communication and remote sensing in Pakistan. The three major satellite projects GOMSAT-1R, Remote Sensing Satellite-1, and the latest multi-mission communication satellite launched in 2024 have had a profound impact. The new satellite transforms digital access in remote Pakistan. The collaboration even extends to agriculture and medicine. In 2022, China and Pakistan launched a space breeding program, sending seven important Pakistani medicinal plant seeds to space to study their growth in microgravity. With each mission, Pakistan moves closer to the stars. And with China as a partner, the journey is off on a strong start. For navigation, China's independently self-developed the Beidou Navigation Satellite System has been serving the international users for years. Now recognized as a world-class system, it continues to shape our technological future. And let's examine its operation and international impact. This is China's Beidou Navigation Satellite System, simply known as BDS. It delivers precise positioning, navigation and timing services, or PNT services worldwide. First initiated in 1994, Beidou achieved milestones with the construction of BDS-1 and BDS-2 completed in 2000 and 2012 respectively. And finally, BDS-3's full deployment on July 31, 2020, making China the third nation with an independent global navigation system. With the final backup satellites launched last September, Beidou-3's research and construction are complete. The entire network now operates flawlessly. The system achieves centimeter-level PNT services precision across 70,000 kilometers. What kind of role the Beidou-3 has been playing in terms of navigation and various other applications? Its impact is substantial. Last year's related output exceeded 500 billion yuan. Today, the whole world utilizes Beidou. Beidou applications now span critical economic sectors, including transportation, energy, natural resources, and emergency response. I myself saw the Beidou PNT service used in tractors in northwest China back in the year 2020. At that time, this was all new, but now it has become ordinary in our life. Well, this tractor is making an automatic try, and the Beidou navigation satellite system is giving it a centimeter level navigation. These technologies are transforming daily life worldwide. Our products serve 140 plus countries, from African surveying to European robotics. Notably, a Uganda client using our technology earned a PhD in mapping and now leads their national mapping society. The construction of BDS from 1 to 3 is not the end. China is scheduled to build a more ubiquitous, integrated and intelligent and a comprehensive system with positioning, navigation and timing capabilities by 2035, which refers to the stronger, safer and more reliable system with BDS as its core and foundation, covering indoor to outdoor, from deep sea to deep space. Some companies are already making progress in such applications. We've developed transmitters for challenging environments, like tunnels and parking lots. With active projects in Pakistan and Malaysia for metro systems and hydropower construction sites. The applications have the broad scope and promising prospect. 
While BDS-3 serves global users, BDS-4 will extend services to Earth-Moon space, laying foundations for deep space exploration. Our mission continues. The vision reflects China's commitment and international joint efforts for the better future, and the cooperation between China and the United Nations is an example. From the very beginning of the space age, the United Nations has strived to utilize the unique benefits of outer space for the betterment of all. The multiple regional educational center affiliated to the United Nations on the space science and technology have been established across the world, and one in China is playing an important role. This is a regional center for space science and technology education in Asia and the Pacific, affiliated to the United Nations. It's operated in Beihang University, which is the first institution of higher education in aerospace in China. Recently, the center moved from the main campus of Beihang in Beijing to the International Innovation Institute of the University in the city of Hangzhou in East China. Our center moved to Hangzhou in January last year. All the facilities here have been running for about one year. You see the national flags there. They are for the Conference of Group on Earth Observations held by our center last September with more than 70 countries participating. Since establishment in 2014, our center has been running with the educational mode based on the training plans of space application of the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. The center has seven main education and training fields, including remote sensing and geographic information system, global navigation satellite systems, microsatellite technology, space law and policy, and space project management. Since September last year, about 400 master and doctoral students from more than 30 developing countries in Asia and the Pacific have graduated, and more than 30 short training programs with over 2,000 participants from more than 70 countries have been provided. Since 2015, the center has invited more than 30 international experts and over 140 domestic experts to give lectures to the participants. Professor Huang Hai is a chair professor on microsatellites at the center and is also the chief designer of the EBSCO Student Small Satellite One. He has been teaching here since the very beginning of the center's creation. Now I working for this training center and uh, teaching courses. For example, the spacecraft uh, structure and the mechanism and the introduction of space technology. I also bring of our international student team also combined with our domestic student team together to design and development, even finally launch student small satellite. And see, this is the crack of a slope. This is very, very detailed information, for example, and the students appreciate the introducing of more courses, saying they have gained a lot from this process. My experience has been really good. I think all the professors are so accessible and have been gentle uh, with us, uh, so giving us the right direction for our, our research. I believe I will, I will be able to take whatever I've learned here in Beihang University, take it back home and you know, put plans in place such that Whatever I've seen here can be replicated back in my country to improve the livelihood in my country. These are just some examples of the aerospace industry from China, showing the country's commitment in its sector and beyond to achieving sustainable development goals and increasing the well-being of all people.